Alrighty, good evening everyone. It is 6 p.m. on Friday and uh, we are lucky enough to have Michael Carlos with us today to uh, discuss the publication of the newest Hopkinton High School Press. Until now it's been a it's been an online only publication uh, and they've recently gone to their first edition of a printed paper. Why on earth did you go to a printed paper after all these years of developing uh, <coughs> cyber sites? Well, uh, first off, I'd like to say it's a great privilege to be here with you tonight. Um, and that's a fantastic question. So we decided to go to a print edition as well as the internet publication because viewership wasn't where we wanted it to be. Uh, a lot of students, my peers, were having a hard time finding the online publication and it wasn't uh, well publicized. So um, we decided, you know what, the best way to increase viewership was to go to a printed newspaper. And also, uh, I just had a personal nostalgia for holding a printed newspaper and a... Join the club. <laughs> And a few other uh, surrounding towns have printed newspapers, and I said, you know, Hopkinton High School is supposed to be this upstanding public high school, and yet we don't have a printed newspaper, so why not just go all the way and print a newspaper? Great idea. Do you know when the last one was printed in the high school? I don't have the exact date, but um, every teacher I've asked uh, cannot recall the last time. The high school had a printed newspaper. Yeah, I can't either. You know, uh, it's a great look, folks. I'll tell you, this looks like, and you can stay on two shot, Eric. This looks like uh, the, the uh, USA Today. What a beautiful, what a beautiful design they have. What a beautiful color scheme. And who, who designed this? So the full layout uh, was. Uh, designed by our teacher, Mr. Zinger. However, I did have the final say in where the articles were placed and what articles went on, uh, what pages. Uh, I'm very proud of the header, though, the HHS Press. Is right at you. Right uh, that was really a group decision, a class decision, and uh, we're really happy with the turnout. How much more time is involved with a class producing HHS press.org uh, and then adding this uh, to the workload? I would say a fair amount of uh, extra time is put into the printed newspaper as we have to um, fit articles onto each page, we have to decide where they go, uh, we have to have everything done uh, in advance so that we can send it to the publisher and they can print it. So it's it, there's a lot more of a a lot more crunch time, a lot tougher deadlines, but I'd say that the uh, hard work has paid off. It certainly has. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful look, and I can see that you're covering a lot of bases. I don't think anyone uh, picked the president, though. I think you have a lot to, t to say about all of the candidates, but I don't see, uh, I don't see any bets. Uh, well, um, that's true. Was it a group decision to stay out of uh, politics? Well, we have a whole section on the election, mm -hmm. so we didn't necessarily stay out of politics, but we, uh, good journalists don't have a biased opinion when it comes to politics. Good journalists usually try to have no opinion when it comes to politics. Well, that's what I meant. By not getting into it is what I meant, that you didn't choose a side. No, oh, absolutely. And so that was, that was more of a... Uh, a compliment then. Yeah, well, thank you. You're welcome. There was a discussion of whether to endorse a candidate or not, but uh, we overall decided against it as uh, we shouldn't be forcing our opinions on uh, other people. It should be their decision. Well, you can also have, and I'm sure you all discussed it, uh, about having an opinion. So, But uh, that's in a certain part of the paper. It's uh, usually not on the front page. I'm not going to say what paper does that, but. Uh, you know, there are some who feel it's their right to uh, carry somebody else's water. And, uh, uh, but I think that what you're doing is by keeping that off the front page and on your inaugural issue, you're keeping opinions about the president-elect uh, of any of the candidates. I think you've kept them 
uh, right out of the paper, and that's a good thing. How many sports do you have you covered in this issue? So in our inaugural issue, we did not cover any sports. As uh, to be completely honest, it was a bit of a last minute thing to throw this newspaper together. I mean, we had advanced planning, but not as much time as we uh, wished to have. However, the next issue will have a complete sports section. We'll be covering things like the Thanksgiving Day football game, uh, Powder Puff, uh, the varsity volleyball team has made it is to the state Powder finals. Is Powder Puff tonight? Powder Puff is tonight. That's yes. at 7 o'clock? Yep, we have one of our writers out there. Excellent. Covering the field right now. So, so that's, um, <laughs> so stick around a little while longer. It won't take you long to get to the high school field. Is that where it is at the... Uh, yeah, it's uh, at the main football field. At the uh, Dave Hughes... Uh, arena, I think it's called, or some such uh, some such thing. Dave was the one of the most popular football coaches that Hopkinton High School ever had, and during his 30 years, uh, the team uh, had had a real streak of winnings. I think probably one of the best teams around. So I uh, hope you all have a great time. That's is it the class of uh, 2017 and the class of. 2018. In 2018. So, so they're going to be ripping some hair up there. Well, no, actually I have a picture on so I'm not, I'm not being sexist. I have, I have a, a, a photo up there right now on, on the front page of, uh, of uh, Pierce Summons pulling some hair. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but it kind of looks like that. I'm sure you're all going to have a great time. But Hopkinton High School Press, um, how, many do you, how many do you think you printed this last time? Uh, I believe the exact number was 1,500 in circulation. And um, is that, that's the entire school, isn't it? Oh, the entire that's, high school? Uh, that's the entire high school and beyond. Wow, that's fantastic. So, so can you, it, does it cost money? It does cost money. I yes. don't mean for you, I mean for everyone else to get a copy. Oh, no, 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 it's completely really? free. Yeah. Oh, that should be, uh, we should tell people about that. It's free. People love free things. So, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's worth it too. It's worth a lot more than just being free. You'll have another one out in? December 5th. December 5th. Issue. Where can uh, the average person who's not a student pick it up? Uh, so the inaugural edition uh, was specifically geared at students. It was kind of our tutorial run to see if it would pick up. So the first issue was only in circulation at the high school. However, the second edition we do want to put in local shops around town. So uh, if you're in the area, pick up the paper. Which, uh, you're talking about places like uh, the drugstore? Correct. We have no uh, confirmations yet of uh -huh. if we can actually uh, distribute the papers through those businesses. However, in the second edition, we are selling advertising. Oh, good yeah, to know. We've had uh, some success in that, so we're hoping that the same companies that advertise in the paper will be willing to allow us to uh, circulate papers through the business. And so, you'd be competing with Hop News, do you think? Uh, no, for a competitor, but uh, some of the same stuff. Okay, well, maybe I think we're wrapping up right now. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, good one. But you know, that's always a consideration because we've had uh, people calling us, asking us how we do this, how we do that, and uh, it's because they want to compete. No, that's why they want to learn how to do this or do that, and that's been going on for years. Um, some. Organizations in town will take our name and steal the hop from it, and uh, and then try to compete with us. But I'm not going to get into who, but um, we started in 2003, and that kind of thing's been going on for years, where people have taken um, some valuable uh, part of what we do, and you know, so we just have to keep trying and and updating this beautiful uh, equipment we have here and um, competing uh, as, as we know how to. I think that making your connections is a good thing. Uh, you, uh, do you, how much of the community do you plan to, to reach in, in, in what subject areas? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to do. There's, there are state parks. Uh, there are uh, trails in town. There are uh, properties that are owned by HALT, the HALT organization, by Sudbury Valley trustees. It's just the, t the town, uh, even though you say, or a person might say, this isn't the town I knew. Well, you can find that town by going off the road and 
who, who you know about the center trail. They've, uh, they've done a great job with that. They've had, had a couple of art shows this past year. Uh, but also just opening it and, uh, and making it uh, rideable, walkable, runnable, it's been a great asset and they're going to keep uh, moving that uh, south to meet with other trails. So um, then when you uh, sell, are you going to sell, did you say? Uh, yes, we're selling advertising yeah. space. No, I mean the paper itself? No, no, it will always be a print newspaper. Okay. Um, is there anything that stops you from selling it? Um, publication? Well, we don't want to compete with organizations, uh, organizations such as Hop News or the Hoppington Independent. Oh, that's so, wonderful to hear. Thank you. Well, this is a student-run newspaper, and uh, we don't really want it to become a, a newspaper. We don't want it to be the main newspaper in the town. We believe there are professionals to that. We just think that these students like to read about stories that affect them. Isn't it fun? And you know something? You're living in a very historic time with this last election. Very, very historic. Uh, when I look back, uh, I think everyone has has some history that they haven't really pondered yet. Uh, when I talk about uh, being on my high school newspaper when President Kennedy died, that stays with you. That doesn't go away. And uh, we got the edition out so fast that we didn't have time to have the, uh, the uh, photos treated properly. We couldn't even have them screened because you really had to do that back then. You had to, had to manually uh, set the pages. And, and, uh, and we, we actually did the, if you can see how the uh, page is not justified here, what we actually did is with our first trial copy of the page, we would go in and uh, whatever didn't overlap uh, but came within four or five characters of the edge, we had to deposit hash marks in between the letters. And so the typist uh, who did a, uh, an IBM Selectric typewriter with a carbon ribbon, it had no, it had no uh, texture to it, it was not cloth. And so when it struck, it struck uh, with no flaws in it. It was a perfect impression. And so what we did is we, we, had, to, we had to put a slash mark wherever there are extra spaces. And so we had to di distribute them. And the, uh, the typist, who was an employee of the school, uh, we gave it to her and she just went to them. And you know, there was nicely, beautifully justified uh, so that they could take a picture of it and put it on the offset press. Um, and, but we were, we were a little bit behind because uh, technology did not speed us along. Uh, there were uh, some other terrible things that were on in the world back then too. Uh, but you know, there were some great things. There were some great accomplishments. And I think I might have touched upon Jonas Salk, the, uh, the um, developer of the polio vaccine, the first polio vaccine that was a vaccination. And he probably over the years, he has saved millions of kids from that crippling disease. And, and we know some of them in this town uh, who are um, 60 or more years old that it has affected some as young, some as and later in life. And uh, it, it is, uh, it's hurt their ability to move around uh, greatly. Can you think of anything uh, in your life that, uh, so far, it's a young life and you're doing very well, that um, has affected the world in any particular way? And if you want to say something really nice that's affected, that's, that's good too. Um, well, I think my generation is living in the most uh, unstable times there's been since the late 60s. Uh, I don't think there's been a more turbulent time in the U.S. and the world as there has been now. We are the generation, the post 9-11 generation. Uh, we're also the generation of uh, our first black president. And uh, we're also, we also seem to be living through a time of a anti-globalization uh, trend throughout the world. 
So I think, and the whole age of um, global terrorism. So I believe that our generation faces uh, a unique set of challenges that haven't been seen uh, recently. But uh, I think our generation is the uh, best equipped people to take on these challenges. And uh, histo I mean, if you want to talk about it, uh, historical, uh, you know, significant stories like your assassination of uh, JFK, uh, JFK when you were in high school, I believe that the election of uh, Donald Trump as president uh, is kind of like our uh, big historical moment. And uh, we do talk about this at school that in our textbooks 20 years from now, mm -hmm. it'll be about, you know, the election of uh, Donald Trump as president. And uh, so it is historical. And we do plan on uh, covering bits of this election. There's been a few uh, silent protests at school about uh, the election. Are you going to write about it? Yeah, about that's actually, protests? yeah, I'm, I'm specifically writing about that article as we speak. Uh, so, you know, you can agree or disagree with the uh, president, but he certainly has given me a lot to write about. <laughs> a lot of good material the to write about. The yeah. president-elect? Yeah. The president too. Elect. President Obama too. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot has gone on uh, since he was elected. Um, some really good, uh, some not so good. Uh, and he... His, uh, I think his background has incited a lot of people uh, who are not happy that, uh, that he has become president. And it's pretty much split the country in half, not necessarily just his presidency, but um, the politics behind, and I, I think you touched upon it, uh, I would call it globalization. Uh, globaliz globalization of nationalism uh, and um, I'm not so sure we can't be certain in this world you don't want to hear my scenario but we can't be certain in this world um, who's who out there spy versus spy kind of game so it is uh, it is it is a challenge for your generation and that is for sure the, uh, edu the education that uh, you all are going to need uh, to move this country forward and protect it, um, but I'll tell you, this is uh, this is one way to do it is to inform the public. Uh, it, we wouldn't presume that that the students are going to necessarily educate the public. Although, when I was in seventh grade, we brought the uh, lesson book home for the touch tone dialing. <laughs> so we had te technology back then. And the technology that that you're going to see, what do you, what do you have to say about that in one sentence? What's upcoming? Uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, my mother is uh, older than most parents. She grew up with uh, you know three TV channels and a black and white TV, and now she has a supercomputer in her hand. Wow! So you talking about her phone? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, it's. Uh, I think there's a lot of great technological advances uh, occurring right now. A lot of uh, really amazing advances in um, space travel and uh, you know that type of technology. So uh, I'm excited for the future, but you know I'm also I try and be optimistic. But it's also uh, very unpredictable with uh, the events throughout our lifetime. And they are, and the technology seems to keep leapfrogging. Like all of a sudden, wow, what's this thing they just invented? Now, we didn't need the watch. Uh, I don't think we needed the iWatch or whatever, whatever it was called. But somebody announced today that they are uh, going to flood the skies with satellites so that everybody can have internet in the whole world. I think it was something like 14,000 satellites. That's, uh, that's quite an endeavor. And then Mars is next. So you folks really have... Uh, Quite an exciting future to look forward to. And I wish you the best with it. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much. Maybe for we'll do it again. Oh, maybe. That'd All be right. Great on. Thanks.